the Instaloop system came very soon after ordering, and these are the main components I found in the box. First of all, the storage tank, the solenoid with a Schrader valve already attached, and an electrical controller, and we'll talk about all of those in more detail later. Also in the box was lots of hardware, some electrical, some plumbing, and some you'll never need, but I think the intent was to provide for every eventuality. There are also some materials necessary for installation, including thread lock and Teflon tape, which I omitted to put in the picture. And there's also a tank retaining clamp, which I also couldn't get in the picture, but which you'll see later on. This picture shows a typical setup. It's my setup, and yours may be a little different. In fact, it probably will be, particularly around the engine block where I have an oil switch, but you may have a sender or even a pipe. Also, the storage tank in my application has the outlet downward. It's not absolutely vertical as I've shown here, but you may find that for your installation you prefer to have the outlet upward, in which case we'll deal with that a little later on because it needs to be assembled slightly differently. Below the tank you'll see a Schrader valve. Auto Engine Lube recommend that you add a little air to the tank and you use the Schrader valve to do so in order to optimize the performance. Remember that air is a spring and so gives the system a little bit more oomph. The recommended pressure is 10 to 15 psi. So the Schrader valve is the solenoid valve. You'll notice it has two numbers on it, two and one. They're stamped actually on that metal body there and it's very important that they're in that direction, two towards the tank and one toward the engine. This will be mentioned again, I'm sure, but the solenoid valve, when it's not energized electrically, blocks flow from the storage tank to the engine. But even when it's not energized, it always allows flow from the engine to the storage tank. It's powered by one wire that goes directly to the battery, so that has to be fused. The other wire goes to a controller which grounds it and completes the circuit. We'll talk about the controller's purpose a little later on. A four foot flexible hose is provided to take the oil from the solenoid valve to the engine block. That has one compression fitting already installed and then you cut the hose to length and add the other compression fitting at the other end according to the length that you require. The oil usually enters the engine from where an oil switch or oil sender is removed. And so the hose from the solenoid goes to a T-block and that T-block through some kind of adapter into the engine block. The oil sender or switch that was removed then goes on the side of the T-block, which gives the oil from the Instalube system a straight shot into the engine block. This shows the empty system immediately after assembly. The engine, of course, is off and the ignition is off and the oil gauge is at zero. If you lost any oil when working on the engine block end of things, then it's time to replenish that before starting the car. It was mentioned earlier that if you have an installation where the outlet of the tank needs to be upward, then you need a slightly different assembly. And that's shown at the bottom right of this picture. Now we can see inside the tank, you can see we've added a blue tube. And that's a pickup tube because obviously the oil goes to the bottom of the tank and that tube then will pick that up rather than air that would be the case if you didn't have it. Now the engine has started and the oil pressure increases and oil moves into the storage tank. Irrespective of the state of the solenoid valve, whether it's powered or not, remember, it can always move in that direction from the engine to the storage tank. If you were to just idle the engine, then the oil would probably be at this point the highest it would be during this engine run because it will be thicker and colder and the oil pump pumps at a higher pressure when the oil is thicker, be it multi-grade or not. And so 30 seconds after the ignition has been switched on, if you don't switch the car off, the controller will switch the solenoid valve off and trap that high pressure oil and air in the storage tank. And then if you left it idling and the oil pressure gets lower because the oil gets warmer, nevertheless that trapped higher pressure oil will not be able to leave the storage tank. A few seconds after the engine has been switched off, its oil pressure will deplete to close to zero. But there will be oil under pressure in the storage tank trapped in there by the solenoid valve. Now is the time to check for leaks and 
to check the oil level because some oil has moved into the storage tank and will reduce the level in the oil pan. This picture shows the instant the ignition is switched on. The ignition voltage triggers the controller, which in turn grounds the bottom end of the solenoid, completing the circuit and powering it so it can open and allow flow from the storage tank to the engine. About a second later, the oil is moving out of the storage tank and into the oilways of the engine, raising the oil pressure. So in the next step, we can crank the engine and maybe for the first time in its life, it will start with full oil pressure and with less wear. Soon after starting the car, the engine builds up its own oil pressure and replenishes the oil in the storage tank. 30 seconds after switching the ignition on, the controller will switch the solenoid valve off, trapping oil at pressure in the storage tank. Now let's say that for some reason we don't actually drive the car but leave it idling for some prolonged period. Now the oil gets warmer and the oil pressure drops, but that initial oil that was trapped at high pressure in the storage tank remains at that high pressure, ready for a start should we decide to stop the car now and restart it later. However, instead of shutting the engine off, let's say instead we go for a drive. Within a very short time, the oil pressure from the engine exceeds that that was originally stored in the storage tank. And because our solenoid valve works as a check valve, whatever the highest pressure that we reach during that drive becomes stored in the storage tank, ready for the next time we start the car.